look <laughs> how lucky am i and again the sun comes out for me so i can be in my lovely garden so yes ah oh, had a little practice already and um yeah i've got no agenda really let's let's see what we've got going on here so hi gail hi kishori okay so uh, good morning so gail i have a large ganglion inside my wrist for around a year i can't get rid of it any ideas um hi feeny uh a question good question where, where to begin when getting on the mat um okay uh, I'll, I'll just talk about uh, i'll briefly talk about the ganglion um a ganglion on the wrist is quite a common thing. It's, um, it arises in my, uh, the, uh, medically, they, they don't have any reason for it, but in my um, understanding of things. Hi, Alan. Um, in my understanding of things, it's, um, it's because of um, overuse of the wrist, um, sort of uh, too much pressure through it, um, because uh, a ganglion is a bit of synovial fluid that's popped out of the joint, um, goes through a, a weak part of the joint capsule, and... Um, Six out. Hello, my darling Abigail. <laughs> um, yes, so that's what a ganglion is. It's a bit of uh, joint fluid sort of poking out and, and making a bubble. Um, it's, unless, it, unless it hurts, Gail, uh, it's not a big problem. <laughs> they, used to, they used to call it the Bible something or other because the way you'd normally um, redress it is you'd pop the bubble. You'd get a Bible and whack it. Not that I'm advising that. Um, it, it doesn't hurt too much if you do that, but uh, um, what I would suggest is if you really want to use it for um, learning something about yoga, you would, in principle, I think, um, be able to work with the wrist in a way that creates far less pressure, as in working through the wrist as opposed to against the wrist. You know, when you put weight through the wrist, don't do that. You work through the wrist. So you feel supported by the joints and, the, and through the access of the bones. That will take the pressure out. Now, whether that allows the fluid to return to the joint space, I don't know. Um, it, I, I kind of use that principle to help myself out of um, the sciatic prolapse. But um, I've no evidence that it actually uh, physically works. But um, apart from I was able to <laughs> walk <laughs> very quickly after. But anyway... Um, and how to remain stable in balances. Yes, that's a good one. So, Feeney, yes, uh, where, where do I begin when getting on the mat? Ground space, yes, then how do we keep our curiosity and focus? Well, that's, that's between you and your attention, really. Um, okay, um, what are you looking for, Feeney? When, when you practice, what are you looking for? Because uh, the thing that keeps you curious is is uh, attention on that which you seek. Um, yeah. So um, I would I would not advise seeking getting it right because getting it right is um, has has minimal sort of um, jollies attached to it. Okay. Um, all right, Gail. Well, why don't, when you come to sorry, that, that was just uh, Gail just said um, it's sore now. Um, if you come to um, my joint clinic on the twentieth of October in, in Edinburgh, I'll, um, I'll uh, Friday afternoon. I'll, I'll help you out with that, Gail, because um, it, it, it's about precision of use of the wrist. Um, okay, back to Feeney and and um, anyone else that's interested in how do we motivate ourselves in practice. It, like I was saying, it depends on what you're looking for. Because um, you, know, you know what to do. You know, you, you do stuff. You turn up and you're applying yourself to the feelings of touch and space and, and spaciousness within the body. Great. Yeah. Um, they're useful things to take your uh, attention to. But, um, okay, so you're feeling that you touch the ground and you're feeling that you have space in the body and you're feeling yourself breathe. But what, what are we doing this for? What are we doing this for? Well, uh, we, we've got to have some sort of measure, I think. And getting it, like I said, getting it right is not really it. 
the instruction to try and make touch equal and to feel free to breathe is for a purpose. The purpose is to feel good. <laughs> the purpose is to feel pleasure. Make it kind, you see. Um, so from here, just as you are, become quiet and present, listening from the heart. Make touch even, make it kind. And uh, it's the making it kind that uh, leads to a direct sense of physical pleasure. Uh, and uh, you, you don't work out whether you're feeling pleasure in your head. You either feel it or you don't. There are, there are pleasant feelings, there are not pleasant feelings. And that's your guidance. Um, and whether, whether you're doing uh, uh, 108 sound salutes in 20 minutes, or whether you're doing Mahapranayama, um, or Mahapranayama Asana, uh, or, or sort of um, the school's kind of a, approach to setting yourself up for uh, creating the right conditions for yoga to happen. Whatever you're, whatever you're doing, whether it's lying on the ground, making your touch equal, or, or a whole series of postures, what are we doing it for? You know? So if, if what you're doing it for is to make it feel pleasant, um, there, are, there are other things to achieve, like balance is, Gail, so we might get on with that. So I don't want to spend my whole session um, talking. But um, yes, there, there are practical considerations, and that would be making your touch equal, and or being balanced, or being able to breathe, that sort of thing. There are practical considerations. And then there's the barometer of how well we are doing. And um, doing the po achieving the posture is nothing. A anyone, can, anyone can sort of, um, you know, hold tension for a limited amount of time to hold a balance, you know. And uh, so everything's braced against everything else. And um, I'm cheating a bit because I'm relaxing my foot. <laughs> if I wasn't relaxing my foot, I would fall over like a, like a dead tree. But um, so achieving the posture is not really it, but achieving what? Ease, achieving freedom, achieving a sense of relaxed support, um, achieving a sense of enjoyment, um, pleasure in the environment that I'm in. What's the point of being a, a tree if all my attention is in keeping everything fixed in place, you see? So, um, Yes, and that's all I do when I come and teach. Is I, I persuade people to look for very simple things like um, the quality of touch. So if you're if you if you want to play with balances with me, uh, what I would suggest let, let's do with the leg you are less familiar with balancing through, and be on the other leg, so you can experience arriving into your action of touch. Now, I, I, I don't mean arriving with your weight on that foot, because that inherently leaves you unstable. I'm talking about the action of touch, because um, the whole idea of balance is um, it's a strange concept. You know, when you walk, you're not constantly balancing. You, know? you are simply touching the ground and feeling supported. So if we can practice arriving into the action of touch, which is putting the foot down, and it has some parts to it. There's a, first there's the heel, and there's the blade of the foot, the little toe edge, and then finally the ball of the foot goes down, as you would propel yourself forwards in walking, see? Okay? So, heel, first the heel goes down, how does that go? It's your action of touch, the blade of the foot, it's your action of touching, and then the ball of the foot comes down to touch the ground. And that, that last part is what gives you um, upward support, which would lead to a forward release in space, you see? So, heel, little toe, ball of the foot, going down. So that's one aspect of the investigation. The other aspect is Feeney's question. Um, how, how do I keep focus on practice? Well, I want to make it pleasurable. Because no amount of this exercise is going to make me feel good or balanced even, really. It's just going to, um, this is my presence to what I am doing. Now I want some presence to um, the space that I'm occupying, because I want what I'm doing, which is touching the ground, to support me in that space. So before putting the foot down, 
I want to get a nice, spacious relationship to that foot. And, and space is something that happens on the inside. Okay? Space is it's not what happens when you stretch the outside. That doesn't, that doesn't give you space. Uh, that makes you tense. What hap you get space by allowing space to happen on the inside, away from your touch. And it inherently needs to be a sort of relaxation into the space that you're occupying so that you can breathe freely. And space, is, like I said, is not on the outside, it's on the inside. It's a distance between you and your touch from within that gets you involved on the, uh, with this fluid space in here. So, if I can pre-create that condition of spaciousness by being with the space around me, and it's very easy today because it's a beautiful day, by using these things, these arms as wings, so I can catch hold of a wrist perhaps and create some space between my wings and myself so I can start to use my wings for that purpose, then I have a more spacious relationship between me and my heel. And I can then have a more spacious relationship between me and the outward touch of the blade of the foot, little toe edge. Toes have to be active for that. And then I have a more spacious relationship as the ball of the foot goes down. Now when the ball of the foot goes down, I want to relax as well as be spacious. So relaxing is not dropping my shoulders, because that makes me heavy. Relaxing is dropping my breath and my ribs. So what happens is there's this feeling of the ribs dropping away from where my wings are in space. And there is a core responsiveness that goes with that. Okay. So my ribs drop away from my wings, leaving me spacious, and my foot goes down through the touch. So it's again, it's a responsive action. So I have space, I breathe, and then when I release the breath, there is an outward action through the earth that allows, that receives the weight of my breath. So I breathe, I soften, I widen. There's a sort of a, a quietening in feeling rather than a stretching out feeling, a gathering in. So the knees might soften, the joints soften, so I can breathe. And then within that spaciousness, as I release the breath, away from space, away from my head, away from my wings, it is through my standing foot. And my foot has to respond. Heel, little toe, ball of the foot. And it's through the touch that these things resolve. The spaciousness coming up through the middle of the body from the foot. And the anchoredness coming down from above through the ribs. Through the rhythmic release of the breath. So it's through this rhythmic engagement with touch that my support is developed. It's, and if the hands are touching each other, I have more surfaces to engage with. If the foot is touching the thigh, I have more surfaces to engage with. And the equality of touch brings me into my center. So it's not a holding of a balance, it's a, a constancy of attention to the touch, the rhythms of breathing, and from the center of the body. And the result is an, op is an expansion in all directions with each exhale. Okay. Let's try it on the other side briefly. So that leg should be nice and strong. Take a breath, make some space. Meet space, be in space so that you can release away from space into the active touch of the foot, heel, little toe ball of the foot. So the foot goes down and the result is the core of the body comes up and the ribs wrap around that space to rest down with the foot as it deepens into the earth. And it's a rhythmic, pulsing engagement through the planet, not against the surface, through the planet. It's be standing on stilts, not um, on your mat. Through the planet. The deeper you can go, in your rhythmic engagement, then the taller you can be. Don't try and lift, it's no point. It's spaciousness, not lifting, they're different things. And if you have other points of contact, the hands, they can join in with the rhythms of support as you release the breath. 
and the equality of touch between foot and thigh, between foot and hand, uh, feet, between hands, the equality of engagement of touch with each release of the breath should bring you towards the center of things, around the solar plexus, ribs, core of the breathing. To open out in all directions rhythmically. Okay, so how's that doing? <sighs> um, well, all of that was pleasurable for me. <laughs> um, I hope it was for you, Feeney, because because that's the point. I think uh, we, we have this um, we have this very simple uh, recognition system, and we have we can categorize sensation as pleasant or unpleasant. And um, a lot of that is associative, so be, be um, wary of presuming that a feeling is a particular thing. You know, as when we start to wake up the spine, if you're not familiar with that feeling, you, uh, some people have anxiety around feeling their spines, because usually when you feel your back, it's because you've hurt it. So there are associative sort of relationships to sensation. But if you can drop beneath the interpretation and direct into um, the direct sensation of things, it is either pleasant or unpleasant. And um, pleasant is good. <laughs> pleasant is good. Even if in even if it's intense, so um, and my my instructions. If you're if you're busying yourself with following my instructions, um, then that's a useful thing to do with your head. So it's not a terrible thing, but it won't motivate you. What, what needs to motivate you is the experience, the experience of it of feeling better, at least after doing practice. Um, if it's during, that's, that's fantastic, because then you have direct motivation to, to practice. Um, I hope that uh, helps with balances, Gail. It, uh, like I said, it's not um, balance is an idea of putting, stacking dead weights on top of each other and getting it right. Um, that's not being alive, that's not how it works. There is a responsive contact that you have to allow. You mustn't try and control it too much because it, it works perfectly well by itself. It's called proprioceptive response. Um, the thing you need to be doing to make it easier is to take the weight out of the, the sort of the spine by, by taking space, um, creating space up, uh, up through the core of the body and then giving the weight through to the foot from the release of the breath in the upper body. Yeah, that's the practical practicality of it. The, the, the precision of it is around pleasure and the engagement with your environment in an in a enjoyable way. Okay. Um, I hope that answers things. So what have I got coming up? I've got um, anyone that wants to work with me in Brighton. I don't know if there are any places left, but um, Unity Studio are... Uh, running a sort of postgraduate course for teachers and the like, uh, and other body workers, I guess. Um, I'm doing a thing on um, ha uh, uh, how to how to be um, kind to joints, essentially. So uh, I expect people will have specific questions. So I'll, I'll, uh, if you want to come along to that, that's that's this Friday. Uh, get uh, get in touch with Unity Studio to book on that. Um, what else? Uh, oh yes, I've got my joint clinic on the 20th of October in Edinburgh and we, um, myself and Abigail are doing a full immersion weekend up in Edinburgh. You can uh, you can join for um, just the Saturday or you can join for both days. I think there's a discount for both days. Um, yes, that, that's on the following weekend, which is the 28th and 9th, I think, of October. And then um, Guy Fawkes weekend up in Lancashire at um, Debbie's place. So... Um, Yes, do do come and do sign up, something, come and come and work with me. Um, I'm I'm doing I do Skype, some one to ones, um, other things. If you have a specific issue, I can I can usually help. Have a Skype if, uh, directly if you if you're not in the local area. 
Um, and Gail, yeah, come along to the joint clinic if you want some hands-on help with that uh, ganglion thing. Um, hopefully we should be able to get it so it doesn't hurt anymore, okay? Right, th I think that's about it. Uh, I've gone over time by five minutes, so I shall say namaste. I am Mark J. Aquaviva of the Aquaviva School of Yoga. Um, signing off. Thank you. I shall see you next week. Bye now.